For millennia, the deepest parts of the ocean remained unfathomable and unexplored. Only recently have people been able to explore the trenches and vast abyssal plains of the deep sea. Before the 20th century, divers used devices called diving bells to breathe and explore underwater. In 1934, submersibles were invented, and a decade later, scuba was invented. Within 26 years, men were able to reach the bottom of the deepest trench in the world. Even so, only 2% of the ocean's floor has been explored to date. Typical diving bells before the Middle Ages consisted of either glass or wood, and were never very effective. The diver's mobility and diving time were severely limited. During the Middle Ages, the people of Europe considered undersea exploration too dangerous and full of mysteries to show any real interest. However, throughout the Renaissance, interest in undersea exploration increased, and in 1535, the first practical diving bell was invented by Guglielmo de Lorena. It consisted of a barrel resting on the diver's shoulders and was supported mostly by slings. Later updates incorporated air pumps so that the diver could walk around in a suit and were usually much larger, allowing for more air. By the end of the 18th century, diving bells had been developed well enough so that their use was no longer a technical hurdle. However, their efficiency was still nowhere near enough to explore the majority of the ocean, and the depth of these dives was limited to around 40 meters, because the pressure of the sea took its toll on the divers' ears and sinuses. Finally, in 1934, the first submersible was invented by Charles William Beebe and Otis Barton. It is called the bathysphere and consisted of a spherical chamber with three small portholes on the front and a larger hatch in the back. Later that same year, the partners made a record-setting descent to 3,028 feet in the waters off the Bermuda Islands. Two oxygen tanks in the sphere carried eight hours worth of air, trays of absorbents collected carbon dioxide and moisture, and panes of pressure-resistant quartz were fitted to the sphere as windows. Conditions were so primitive that Beeb and Barton carried small palm leaf fans to circulate air in the chamber. For years, no one believed them until the observations and photographs made by others verified these observations, and Beeb was officially credited with the discovery of hundreds of new life forms. Balloonist and inventor Auguste Picard met Charles William Beebe at the Chicago World's Fair in 1933, and the two like minds immediately became friends. In 1937, inspired by the bathysphere, Picard began building his bathyscaph with its gasoline-filled float and suspended chamber or gondola of spherical steel. In September 1953, joined by his son Jacques, Picard set the new record of 10,390 feet. They were limited only by the depth of the Mediterranean Sea. However, the ultimate objective was a dive into Challenger Deep, the deepest point in the world's oceans, the Mariana Trench, located near Guam. It is a 35,800-foot deep chasm discovered in 1949 by the HMS Challenger 2 research ship. The dive was scheduled for January 23, 1960 to be manned by Jacques Picard and Lieutenant Don Walsh. After descending at the speed of an elevator and having their fragile craft tossed around by thermoclines, Picard and Walsh reached the deepest known point on Earth. With the depth race over, the oceans were open to more thorough scientific exploration. Maurice Ewing was a professor of geology at Lehigh University. He had used seismic reflection, a technique for bouncing mini earthquake waves generated by explosives off of surfaces and measuring their reflections, to locate deep oil and gas reserves in Texas. He later applied the same method over the ocean to map the continental shelf, the border of any continent at the point where it drops steeply to the abyssal plain. 
His technique has led to several very important scientific discoveries, including mid-ocean ridges and seamounts. Jacques Cousteau served as a gunnery officer in the Navy, where he became interested in the ocean. During and after his Navy career, Cousteau developed underwater diving equipment by inventing whatever he felt was necessary. His inventions were many, but the most notable is the aqualung, or scuba, which stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus, which he and Emile Gagnon, a French engineer, designed in 1943. In 1950, Cousteau obtained indefinite leave from the Navy to devote himself to underwater exploration. In the 1960s, Cousteau started a series of experiments in building underwater habitats where people could live. These concepts were abandoned because they were too expensive for anyone to fund, but they raised a good deal of attention. The deep sea submersibles that provide so many stunning images from the depths of the ocean are likely the work of Alan Vine. In the 1940s, there were about 45 ocean research vessels around the world, but all of them had limited ability to explore the greatest depths of the ocean. Vine obtained funds from the Navy's research department to design and build a deep sea submersible, a machine that could withstand the tremendous water pressures at depth holding a crew of only two or three, powered by golf cart batteries, and controlled by a mothership at the surface. The new submersibles could host a number of cameras, sampling devices, and instruments for precise movement. These submersibles came to be known as Deep Submergence Vehicles, or DSVs. The most famous to date is called Alvin. Robert Ballard is best known as a discoverer of the wreckage of the HMS Titanic, which also helped make Alvin famous. But Ballard is also a geologist and oceanographer with a great deal of other astounding achievements to his credit. He was the first to take a submersible on a dive to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and in an exploration of the volcanic seafloor around the Galapagos Islands, he discovered hydrothermal vents with entire ecosystems at depths and temperatures previously thought impossible for complex life. As of now, under 2% of the ocean's floor has been explored. With Alvin and other submersibles, we will continue to make new and incredible discoveries as we explore the remaining 98%.